but kolya did not hear her at last he could go out as he went out at the gate he looked round him shrugged up his shoulders and saying it is freezing went straight along the street and turned off to the right towards the market-place when he reached the last house but one before the market-place he stopped at the gate pulled a whistle out of his pocket and whistled with all his might as though giving a signal he had not to wait more than a minute before a rosy-cheeked boy of about eleven wearing a warm neat and even stylish coat darted out to meet him this was smurov a boy in the preparatory class two classes below kolya krasotkin son of a well-to-do official apparently he was forbidden by his parents to associate with krasotkin who was well known to be a desperately naughty boy so smurov was obviously slipping out on the sly he was if the reader has not forgotten one of the group of boys who two months before had thrown stones at ilusha he was the one who told alyosha karamazov about ilusha i've been waiting for you for the last hour krasotkin said smurov stolidly and the boy strode towards the market-place i am late answered krasotkin i was detained by circumstances you won't be thrashed for coming with me come i say i'm never thrashed and you've got peres von with you yes you're taking him too yes ah if it were only zhutchka that's impossible zhutchka's non-existent zhutchka is lost in the mists of obscurity ah couldn't we do this smurov suddenly stood still you see ilyusha says that zhutchka was a shaggy greyish smoky-looking dog like peres von couldn't you tell him this is zhutchka and he might believe you boy shun a lie that's one thing even with a good object that's another above all i hope you've not told them anything about my coming heaven forbid i know what i am about but you won't comfort him with Paris, von said smurov with a sigh you know his father the captain the wisp of tow told us that he was going to bring him a real mastiff pup with a black nose to-day he thinks that would comfort ilusha but i doubt it and how is ilusha ah oh, he is bad very bad i believe he's in consumption he's quite conscious but his breathing his breathing's gone wrong the other day he asked to have his boots on to be led round the room he tried to walk but he couldn't stand ah i told you before father he said that those boots were no good i could never walk properly in them he fancied it was his boots that made him stagger but it was simply weakness really he won't live another week herzenstube is looking after him now they are rich again they've got heaps of money they are rogues who are rogues doctors and the whole crew of quacks collectively and also of course individually i don't believe in medicine it's a useless institution i mean to go into all that but what's that sentimentality you've got up there the whole class seems to be there every day not the whole class it's only ten of our fellows who go to see him every day there's nothing in that what i don't understand in all this is the part that alexey karamazov is taking in it his brother's going to be tried to-morrow or next day for such a crime and yet he has so much time to spend on sentimentality with boys there's no sentimentality about it you are going yourself now to make it up with ilusha make it up with him what an absurd expression but i allow no one to analyze my actions and how pleased ilusha will be to see you he has no idea that you are coming why was it why was it you wouldn't come all this time smurov cried with sudden warmth my dear boy that's my business not yours i am going of myself because i choose to but you've all been hauled there by alexey karamazov there's a difference you know and how do you know i may not be going to make it up at all it's a stupid expression it's not karamazov at all it's not his doing our fellows began going there of themselves of course they went with karamazov at first and there's been nothing of that sort no silliness 
first one went and then another his father was awfully pleased to see us you know he will simply go out of his mind if ilusha dies he sees that ilusha's dying and he seems so glad we've made it up with ilusha ilusha asked after you that was all he just asks and says no more his father will go out of his mind or hang himself he behaved like a madman before you know he is a very decent man we made a mistake then it's all the fault of that murderer who beat him then karamazov's a riddle to me all the same i might have made his acquaintance long ago but i like to have a proper pride in some cases besides i have a theory about him which i must work out and verify kolya subsided into dignified silence smirov too was silent smirov of course worshipped krasotkin and never dreamed of putting himself on a level with him now he was tremendously interested at kolya's saying that he was going of himself to see ilusha he felt that there must be some mystery in kolya's suddenly taking it into his head to go to him that day they crossed the market-place in which at that hour were many loaded wagons from the country and a great number of live fowls the market women were selling rolls cottons and threads etc in their booths these sunday markets were naively called fairs in the town and there were many such fairs in the year perezvon ran about in the wildest spirits sniffing about first one side then the other when he met other dogs they zealously smelt each other over according to the rules of canine etiquette i like to watch such realistic scenes smirov said kolya suddenly have you noticed how dogs sniff at one another when they meet it seems to be a law of their nature yes it's a funny habit no it's not funny you are wrong there there's nothing funny in nature however funny it may seem to man with his prejudices if dogs could reason and criticize us they'd be sure to find just as much that would be funny to them if not far more in the social relations of men their masters far more indeed i repeat that because i am convinced that there is far more foolishness among us that's rakitin's idea a remarkable idea i am a socialist smirov and what is a socialist asked smirov that's when all are equal and all have property in common there are no marriages and every one has any religion and laws he likes best and all the rest of it you are not old enough to understand that yet it's cold though yes twelve degrees of frost father looked at the thermometer just now have you noticed smirov that in the middle of winter we don't feel so cold even when there are fifteen or eighteen degrees of frost as we do now in the beginning of winter when there is a sudden frost of twelve degrees especially when there is not much snow it's because people are not used to it everything is habit with men everything even in their social and political relations habit is the great motive power what a funny-looking peasant Kolya pointed to a tall peasant with a good-natured countenance in a long sheepskin coat who was standing by his wagon clapping together his hands in their shapeless leather gloves to warm them his long fair beard was all white with frost that peasant's beard's frozen Kolya cried in a loud provocative voice as he passed him lots of people's beards are frozen the peasant replied calmly and sententiously don't provoke him observed smirov it's all right you won't be cross he's a nice fellow good-bye matvey good-bye is your name matvey yes didn't you know no i didn't it was a guess you don't say so you are a schoolboy i suppose yes you get whipped i expect nothing to speak of sometimes does it hurt well yes it does Ech, what a life the peasant heaved a sigh from the bottom of his heart good-bye matvey good-bye you are a nice chap that you are the boys went on 
that was a nice peasant kolya observed to smurov i like talking to the peasants and am always glad to do them justice why did you tell a lie pretending we are thrashed asked smurov i had to say that to please him how do you mean you know smurov i don't like being asked the same thing twice i like people to understand at the first word some things can't be explained according to a peasant's notions schoolboys are whipped and must be whipped what would a schoolboy be if he were not whipped and if i were to tell him we are not he'd be disappointed but you don't understand that one has to know how to talk to the peasants only don't tease them please or you'll get into another scrape as you did about that goose so you're afraid don't laugh kolya of course i'm afraid my father would be awfully cross i am strictly forbidden to go out with you don't be uneasy nothing will happen this time hello natasha he shouted to a market woman in one of the booths call me natasha what next my name is maria the middle-aged market woman shouted at him i am so glad it's maria good-bye ah you young rascal a brat like you to carry on so i'm in a hurry i can't stay now you shall tell me next sunday kolya waved his hand at her as though she had attacked him and not he her i've nothing to tell you next sunday you set upon me you impudent young monkey i didn't say anything bawled maria you want a whipping that's what you want you saucy jackanapes there was a roar of laughter among the other market women round her suddenly a man in a violent rage darted out from the arcade of shops close by he was a young man not a native of the town with dark curly hair and a long pale face marked with smallpox he wore a long blue coat and a peaked cap and looked like a merchant's clerk he was in a state of stupid excitement and brandished his fist at kolya i know you he cried angrily i know you kolya stared at him he could not recall when he could have had a row with the man but he had been in so many rows in the street that he could hardly remember them all do you he asked sarcastically i know you i know you the man repeated idiotically so much the better for you well it's time i was going good-bye you are at your saucy pranks again cried the man you are at your saucy pranks again i know you are at it again it's not your business brother if i am at my saucy pranks again said kolya standing still and scanning him not my business no it's not your business who's then who's then who's then it's trifon nikitich's business not yours what trifon nikitich asked the youth staring with loutish amazement at kolya but still as angry as ever kolya scanned him gravely have you been to the church of the ascension he suddenly asked him with stern emphasis what church of ascension what for no i haven't said the young man somewhat taken aback do you know sabaneyev kolya went on even more emphatically and even more severely what's sabaneyev no i don't know him well then you can go to the devil said kolya cutting short the conversation and turning sharply to the right he strode quickly on his way as though he disdained further conversation with a dolt who did not even know sabaneyev stop hey what sabaneyev the young man recovered from his momentary stupefaction and was as excited as before what did he say he turned to the market women with a silly stare the women laughed you can never tell what he's after said one of them what sabaneyev is it he's talking about the young man repeated still furious and brandishing his right arm it must be a sabaneyev who worked for the kuzmachevs that's who it must be one of the women suggested the young man stared at her wildly for the kuzmachevs repeated another woman but his name wasn't trifon his name's kuzma not trifon but the boy said trifon nikitich so it can't be the same 
his name is not trifon and not sabaneyev it's chichov put in suddenly a third woman who had hitherto been silent listening gravely alexey ivanitch is his name chichov alexey ivanitch no doubt about it it's chichov a fourth woman emphatically confirmed the statement the bewildered youth gazed from one to another but what did he ask for what did he ask for good people he cried almost in desperation do you know sabaneyev says he and who the devil's to know who is sabaneyev you're a senseless fellow i tell you it's not sabaneyev but chichov alexey ivanitch chichov that's who it is one of the women shouted at him impressively what chichov who is he tell me if you know that tall snivelling fellow who used to sit in the market in the summer and what's your chichov to do with me good people eh how can i tell what he's to do with you put in another you ought to know yourself what you want with him if you make such a clamour about him he spoke to you he did not speak to us you stupid don't you really know him know whom chichov the devil take chichov and you with him i'll give him a hiding that i will he was laughing at me we'll give chichov a hiding more likely he will give you one you are a fool that's what you are not chichov not chichov you spiteful mischievous woman i'll give the boy a hiding catch him catch him he was laughing at me the woman guffawed but kolya was by now a long way off marching along with a triumphant air smirov walked beside him looking round at the shouting group far behind he too was in high spirits though he was still afraid of getting into some scrape in kolya's company what sabaneyev did you mean he asked kolya foreseeing what his answer would be how do i know now there'll be a hubbub among them all day i like to stir up fools in every class of society there's another blockhead that peasant there you know they say there's no one stupider than a stupid frenchman but a stupid russian shows it in his face just as much can't you see it all over his face that he is a fool that peasant eh let him alone kolya let's go on nothing could stop me now i am once off hey good morning peasant a sturdy-looking peasant with a round simple face and grizzled beard who was walking by raised his head and looked at the boy he seemed not quite sober good morning if you are not laughing at me he said deliberately in reply and if i am laughed kolya well a joke's a joke laugh away i don't mind there's no harm in a joke i beg your pardon brother it was a joke well god forgive you do you forgive me too i quite forgive you go along i say you seem a clever peasant cleverer than you the peasant answered unexpectedly with the same gravity i doubt it said kolya somewhat taken aback it's true though perhaps it is it is brother good-bye peasant good-bye there are all sorts of peasants kolya observed to smirov after a brief silence how could i tell i had hit on a clever one i am always ready to recognize intelligence in the peasantry in the distance the cathedral clock struck half-past eleven the boys made haste and they walked as far as captain snegiryov's lodging a considerable distance quickly and almost in silence twenty paces from the house kolya stopped and told smirov to go on ahead and ask karamazov to come out to him one must sniff round a bit first he observed to smirov why ask him to come out smirov protested you go in they will be awfully glad to see you what's the sense of making friends in the frost out here i know why i want to see him out here in the frost kolya cut him short in the despotic tone he was fond of adopting with small boys and smirov ran to do his bidding 